This is a Whole Observatory podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Welcome to Star Stuff, a space oddity. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Star Stuff, a space oddity. Uh, today, I am joined by little <laughs> educator Gavin. Yeah, hi, how's it going? <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be talking about astrophotography. So are you excited for this episode? We've been planning yeah. this episode for like a year now. I know, I'm glad I'm finally here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for some reason, full-time student, two and a half jobs, and like trying to have a life in there, you don't have a lot of time to record podcasts. I know, like who who would have thought? Weird how that happens. It's very <laughs> odd. <laughs> But at least um, I'm here, finally. <laughs> so I've been really excited for this episode. Gavin's one of my good buddies. So um, <laughs> we've got yes. some we've got some props for you. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different uh, astrophotography uh, terminology and everything. Um, but before we like fully get started, Gavin, um, what is astrophotography? Let's let's start there. That's probably like a, good a good baseline. Yeah, good baseline. <laughs> yeah. So astrophotography, you can think of it just like using the pieces of the word itself. Mm -hmm. So we have astro and photography. So mm -hmm. basically any sort of space photography, photos, video, even anything mm -hmm. like that. If it's involving space, even the sun counts, then nice. then yeah, anything, <laughs> anything <laughs> in that realm. It can be like, you can, it ranges. So you can do mm -hmm. landscape astrophotography even, but then the famous stuff is the deep, deep space stuff. That's of what course. the fun colors and mm -hmm. pretty pictures. No, that's, totally. <laughs> that's the stuff that I like. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing astrophotography? Uh, kind of two years. I got I got into it right at the beginning of uh, 2020 when ah. I didn't have a, a lot else to do. <laughs> so it was your it was your COVID project. <laughs> it was it was yeah. Nice. So, so I got into it around there. It, nice. Yeah, good time to focus on it. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Um. So I guess um. Before we like start getting really in depth into things, um, what are some things that people need to know, um, yes. like terminology wise, before we start talking about astrophotography? Yeah, there's a, a good amount of terminology yes. <laughs> that will be used. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can we can go through it just to so that we're all on the same page because yeah. it gets real confusing. Uh -huh. Half of this stuff I'm still trying to remember what the words actually mean. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but we can uh, start off. Exposure is probably going to be the most used word yes. <laughs> in the next however long. Uh -huh. And so exposure is basically the time you're actually taking your image. Mm -hmm. So with normal photography that can be like split seconds usually it's like one over a hundred mm -hmm. or something like that because you want really fast but with astrophotography that ranges to seconds long to sometimes mm -hmm. minutes long or even in the case of like how uh pluto was discovered here mm -hmm. hours long yes. exposures yeah and so exposure is the actual shutter in the camera that protects the sensor you open it up uh -huh. how long you keep it open gotcha so, so that's exposure. Yeah, that word is going to become our, our favorite word here for yes. a while. <laughs> yes, it will. But um, another really good one is going to be focal length. And so a lot of people uh, fo focus on focal length because that can help with a, a few things, such as if you want to do planets, you want long focal length. Mm -hmm. It gives you some zoom. And so focal length is basically the distance between the lens and the actual camera itself. So we're gotcha. so front to the to the where you're collecting it. Cool, cool. So that's basically all it is. Usually that's in like millimeters, maybe inches, mm -hmm. or in the crazy case of the Clark Telescope feet. Yes. And so yeah, thirty-two feet. <laughs> yeah. Usually that doesn't happen as much. <laughs> like your backyard setup is not typically going to be measured in feet. Oh yeah. No. But uh, I'm sure somebody has a backyard setup like that. Like Clyde Tombaugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um. And then another another good one is aperture. Mm -hmm. So aperture or the diameter of the actual optic. Gotcha. Or depending on the type of scope that you're using or lens, mm -hmm. um, you either use glass or a mirror. Okay. And so aperture, diameter. So okay. millimeters, again, or inches. is, mm -hmm. And that is more or less the bread and butter of how good your image is going to be. More gotcha. or less. Exposure and aperture 
those are those are the building blocks for your image. Cool. The bigger bigger the aperture, more light you collect. Bigger bucket that you're collecting, mm -hmm. and so that that is the the big thing. Everyone wants a bigger mirror. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. So um, you're you're explaining these things and you're pointing uh, to this little contraption yes. here. Do you want to explain to uh, the viewers what what it is they're looking at here? Yeah. So this is my personal astrophotography setup. Mm -hmm. So a few different components, but more or less it's it looks very a space age version of just a lot of basic things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, normal Canon DSLR camera at the back. I use a 770D. This is a William Optics Red Cat 51. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a hybrid between like a camera lens and an actual refractor telescope. Oh, cool. So, yeah. It's, so it can, <laughs> it does uh, wide field uh, deep space, but it can also do like, I've taken photos of birds with it. Nice. And it's like, cool. Yeah. So it's <laughs> kind of like a nice in between. That's awesome. And then, uh, Probably the most important thing is the actual base here that I don't know if it's in, but that base is the actual tracking mount. And that is what's going to make sure that you can take those long exposures and not have a messy, blurry image everywhere. Because, mm -hmm. spoiler alert, Earth rotates. Yep. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so depending on how long your exposure is, you will start to get these nice lines going through mm -hmm. it because you're not following it. So that just accounts for that. Let's you follow your object, basically. So it's basically like a, a camera telescope. Yep, that's basically basically all it is. Is cool camera camera telescope. This awesome. is my my base of trying to get into this hobby a little bit more. That's awesome, awesome. And um, if you want, we can definitely um, like if you've got some good pictures you want to share, we can yeah. put them in our Discord and yeah, um, definitely like add you on there and be like, hey, look at what <laughs> Gavin did, you know, look at these cool pictures. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> um, cool, cool. So um, next up, I wanted to, <laughs> normally we use my laptop and I know how to use that. Uh, today we're using Gavin's laptop and I was trying to toggle between pages and I have no idea what I'm doing. So <laughs> well, Three fingers, you, you got to two. Ah, but, yeah, three fingers. One more. <laughs> good to know, good to know. Okay, so... <laughs> um, now let's get into kind of like the the meat of astrophotography. Yep. So um, something that gets talked about a lot when we're talking about, uh, you know, taking these pictures of deep space images and everything, um, a term that comes up is composite image. Yes. So what is a composite image? <laughs> a composite image is honestly a phrase that I usually don't use. Ah. Um, I don't know. Everyone has their own, own way of talking yeah. about things. But composite image is basically... You can, two different ways. It's mm -hmm. either it's taking multiple images and putting to, them together in okay. the basic basic form. Multiple images, put them together. Okay. And so you can get cool mm -hmm. effects with normal photography. Maybe you want to have a, a, a cool looking subject, but mm -hmm. they're in one place, and then you have a really cool location for another. <laughs> Take the photos, put them together. Gotcha. But for astrophotography, um, composite image is going to be kind of how you get the really, really good data mm -hmm. in where you take multiple e exposures or photos of the same image and the same frame and everything, mm -hmm. smush them all together. Cool. So okay. the word that I usually use and a lot of people use is stacking. Yes. So stacking is the astrophotography version of composite image. Gotcha. Where to, uh, you want to mm. keep taking photos and then just smush it together. Cool. And it acts as if you took one very long photo. Mm which is useful, gotcha. especially in today's age, because uh, if you try to look at one part of the sky for, say, two hours in a row, a satellite or something is yeah. going to go through it. Now that image is useless. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. Okay, but you can cool. also get kind of cool things as well. Like the same process, if, say, you take a photo of the Grand Canyon, uh -huh. you can take a sharp image of the Grand Canyon, and then you can take a sharp image of the stars and then smush them together so that both of them are very in focus and that you don't have one blurry and one not. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. And I even use that just recently for uh, the Mars mm -hmm. opposition. Yeah. It just uh, happened not too long ago. Uh -huh. And so the moon is, <laughs> moon is a little bit brighter than Mars, mm -hmm. just a little bit. And so just for <laughs> the settings that you need in order to get the moon very good, is different than what you need to get Mars. So you can take ah. take those images separately, keep tracking same frame, just change the settings, and then put them together and kind of cut out the difference of where the moon and Mars is. Gotcha. So both look good. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, let's move down here. Um, I want to, before we get into like the, like, 
I don't know, the technicalities on yes. like astrophotography yeah. and everything. Um, what kind of equipment is used for astrophotography? So you talked about uh, your little uh, setup with like a DSLR camera and everything. Um, I know all, all I really know about astrophotography is what we do up here with like our plane yeah. waves and we've got a DSLR camera on one, but we've also got a CCD camera on the other one. Yes. So what is the difference between those two? Yeah, the difference between uh, CMOS and CCD, the actual mm -hmm. technicality part of them, uh, that's electrical <laughs> engineering that I'm not ah. fully <laughs> fully certain of. But CCD or charge couple uh, devices mm -hmm. are the 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 best. Yeah, it's what what you need even mm -hmm. when you're doing actual astronomical research. That's what you use. Yeah, and it's very cooled sensor, very sensitive. It collects mm -hmm. a lot of light. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the kind of the the main main difference between uh, a CMOS that you have in your uh, DSLR or even in phone cameras now have CMOS yeah. um, is a lot of little technical things and including even the quality of the pixels and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you just get a better image with CCD. Okay. But where CCD really shines is monochrome. Oh. Yes, big fancy word, <laughs> but basically meaning uh, you take out the color. Gotcha. So it just shoots in black and white. It cannot mm -hmm. see color. All it does is just collect light. That's it. Okay. It just It's just, oh, there's light. Sensor picks it up, and now we're good. Uh -huh. um, and so you have that you have the light gathering and then you put different colored pieces of glass or filters in front of it. Mm -hmm. So you only let in red light or green or blue and you gotcha. would use all three of those and then put it together RGB. Now you have beautiful rainbow colored image. Okay. Uh, versus CMOS, you could do that, but it doesn't work as well. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess that kind of leads into the question, how do we translate color to space photos in post? So if we're taking those monochrome images, um, yes. I know like the way I've, like it's been described to me is that like we have a catalog of the stars in the background and we know like, oh, this star is this color. So based yeah. off of that, we can like propagate in colors. Yes. Um, is that kind of how it works typically? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, for a lot of color correcting uh, softwares or even real time as you're taking the photos, yeah, it's uh, for really for taking more professional photos, you wanna you wanna correct it, and so yeah, we use the database okay. of what stars are known, which mm -hmm. is huge yeah. <laughs> in modern modern age. We have so much knowledge of things. Totally. And so yeah, you can you say we know that this star has these values of colors. Fix it. Gosh, um, yeah. I, I don't know how the software does that, but it manages to yeah. make that the baseline. It says, okay, we match this with this. Perfect. We know what everything else is. Mm -hmm. But it also goes a little bit farther than that because mm -hmm. sometimes we have to interpret colors a little bit differently. <laughs> like uh, the James Webb, as an example, yes. <laughs> is is kind of the, the big one right now because we're getting these nice, beautiful colored images that are mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Yeah but they aren't exactly those colors. Yes. <laughs> and I know that that's always a big thing that people see with the Hubble and uh, JWST and stuff. And mm -hmm. people sometimes get confused, but sometimes mm -hmm. it, it is the real color, sometimes it's not. Yeah. And the difference with the James Webb is that it doesn't see what we see. Mm -hmm. It sees an infrared. And it does the same process doing all these exposures, astrophotography, mm -hmm. just bigger scale. Yeah. yeah. But um, it only sees in basically orange. Mm -hmm. That's uh, images that come back are just orange. Yeah. But it sees different wavelengths of light mm -hmm. in that infrared. And so it actually assigns them different colors. Yeah. And so this is actually called, um, I forget the word, uh, chromatic order. That's mm -hmm. it. And so... Um, you assign one wavelength, one color, and then assign another wavelength, another color. Uh -huh. And usually you can also do this with elements too. So yeah. I know oxygen is this wavelength, I'm gonna make that color blue. Mm -hmm. And then I know hydrogen is this wavelength, make that red. Yeah. And then you do that, now you have RGB again, and mm -hmm. now you have your color image. Yeah, and for those of you guys listening, um, check out our spectroscopy episode that we posted. We did go over this in that episode, uh, oh. talking about looking at things in false color yeah. and how you have to like say, okay, well, this wavelength is going to be this color because our eyes, they can't, they don't understand that yeah. wavelength because they're not engineered to see in 
infrared or ultraviolet light or gamma rays or whatever it is that we're looking at. So yeah. um, a lot of times when something says false color, that doesn't just mean, oh, I think this would look really cool if it was orange. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it just means that our eyes physically can't see what that telescope or what that instrument is seeing. Yeah. So yeah, we did talk about this a oh, little perfect. bit, not a bunch, yeah. but yeah. And because even, even with uh, light that we can see, we still sometimes do this. Mm -hmm. And we try to gather light uh, using things like filters yeah. and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. Most common filters that uh, use for astrophotography, at least Earth-based, mm -hmm. is uh, light pollution filters. Yes. Because you get all that stray mm -hmm. stuff. And then if you get rid of that, now you can, again, assign colors and coordinate everything. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Um, so this is this is the question that you were you were dreading. He oh, he, no. he read this in uh, the little outline that I made, and he was like, I, "This this question like threw me threw me for a loop." So, um, yes. what do colors mean in these in these images? What, what yes, do colors in, mean? in one thousand BC? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, the the colors mean a lot of different things, and sometimes. <laughs> It, especially when doing like James Webb translating, it's just mm -hmm. to help us understand what we're seeing. Yeah. Because even uh, scientists that are actually doing this and trying to interpret it, mm -hmm. it's hard to look at a solid color and not know what it and, and understand what it means. Yeah. But for let's just stick with visible visible light, what we can see. <laughs> uh, the different colors that you're going to see are usually associated with different elements. Yes. And so, especially in nebula, that's most common where you see very drastic changes of color. Mm -hmm. You have very distinct colors for very distinct elements. Mm -hmm. And that can range. And sometimes elements kind of mix with the colors as well. But mm -hmm. any any visual light photo that you see, say that take the Orion Nebula, very, very predominantly red pink, mm -hmm. that kind of pinky red color you see in a lot of nebulas. That's hydrogen mm -hmm. because those are regions called stellar nurseries. They make new stars. And so hydrogen is always going to show that kind of red color. Yeah. And then you can, you see a lot of blue a lot mm -hmm. of time and that kind of depends. A lot of time is oxygen yeah. or specifically O3, um, but oxygen, sometimes it can actually be a bit of hydrogen as well. A different type of hydrogen, hydrogen beta uh -huh. instead of alpha, <laughs> which stems into a whole different That's <laughs> side a whole of things. Different conversation, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then you also see uh, yellow sometimes, and that mm -hmm. uh, usually translates to like sodium yeah. around there. But sometimes you get other elements like sulfur appears red, yeah. which usually on Earth we think of sulfur as like a yellow color, mm -hmm. but when it's in that form, it ends up glowing red. Yeah. So it, it's, it's four different elements the colors that we see. Mm -hmm. But that's how we can interpret. Like if we see nebula with a lot of that pinky red in it, that's all that hydrogen, we know that that's making stars. Mm -hmm. And so we can see the different types of what we're actually looking at there yeah. as well. Yeah, so we did uh, we did talk about color a little bit in our spectroscopy episode. Perfect. Um, mostly we talked about different types of spectroscopy, mm -hmm. but it's really cool that we're bringing this up now that like, you know, these different colors, they mean that, uh, typically they mean that there's different elements present, right? Yeah. And so... Um, space is a lot more colorful than people would think. Um, yeah. I, I grew up thinking that space was like not very colorful at all, which now that I know that it is, doesn't really make a lot of sense. Cause like everything on earth is colorful. So like, why wouldn't space be colorful? You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it seems so know. doom and gloom when you look up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You're just like, oh, okay. I guess it's all like monochrome up there, but no, it's like, yeah. it's actually quite colorful up in space. So. It is. It's, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why astrophotography is great. Cause you're trying yeah. to capture that. Exactly. Cause there are regions where you can take a photo and it, it is it does just look doom and gloom but yeah. <laughs> but if, you can find these really beautiful areas no totally totally yeah. and that's what got me in, into this is as as much as i'm trying to study this as well it's i like the pretty pictures i think so, so <laughs> like, i think it's cool yeah the yeah. pretty pictures and everything and um you know we're we're talking a lot about the um like the real like goings on of uh, astrophotography right now we're talking about like you know, what, what do the colors mean and all yeah. of that stuff. But like, how, how did you get into this? You know, like how, how, why? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it kind of, kind of a mix of, uh, what was talked about before. So, mm -hmm. uh, COVID time, uh, getting a little bored, but yeah. <laughs> also towards the end of 
because I was just graduating high school at that time as well. And so mm-hmm. at the end of high school was when I really started to get into astronomy because uh-huh. I always wanted to do engineering. Yeah. But what got me into that and the love of astronomy and why I switched over is because of the pretty pictures. <laughs> nice. And so I, I really, I also, I sort of liked photography, like normal photography outside mm-hmm. of that. But astrophotography kind of struck me. It was really, really magnificent to see like, Oh, mm-hmm. people can just do this at home. Yeah, that they can get these images, and it was actually um, a YouTube channel that I watched, oh. uh, a Canadian YouTube YouTuber uh, that just uh, yeah. did it out of Gavin's, his backyard. Gavin's Canadian, by the way, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint, <laughs> but <laughs> hey, I'm American now too. So I know, yeah, congrats. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, it was a YouTube video of. Um, Mm -hmm. him just talking about like doing it in his backyard and and whatnot and how Mm -hmm. easy it was to get into it and kind of the, the turning point to what really got me interested was, uh, my dad's old telescope that absolutely broken, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it barely (laughs) functioning, but it's, but it's there and it worked great. And Uh I set that up during the great conjunction of uh, Mm -hmm. Jupiter and Saturn Mm -hmm. in 2020 and used my phone and just balanced up to the eyepiece yeah. taking photos. Mm-hmm. And from that, I was like, okay, if I can just do this with the phone, like I can step this up a little bit. And it almost became like a challenge of, okay, well I can do better next nice. time. Nice, I yeah. like that, cool. Yeah, but just eyepiece up, uh, phone up to an eyepiece uh-huh. is how, to, how I got started. Cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. Phone up to the eyepiece is, a, is an easy way to get some pretty good pictures, oh, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And um, the cool thing about like astrophotography is it's kind of like one of those all ages things. Like, uh, Gavin, how old are you? I'm 20. You're 20. So you got yes. into this when you were 18? Yes. Yeah. That's how math works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. And then I've met people who didn't get into astrophotography until well into their 60s or yeah. people who didn't get into it until after they retired. So yep. that's something really cool about the astrophotography community is it kind of doesn't matter how old you are as long as you're like interested in learning about the process and like how to yeah. get good images and things like that. Yeah. Because yeah, part of the the joy of it and why doing this is is fun as well is that journey. Mm-hmm. It's like you you feel like you've achieved something at the end of the day because you've gone through this process yeah. and then you've you got something at the end. So it feels very achieving. <laughs> totally. I think I think it's really cool. And um, I I did have a question for you. Um, yep. How how do you get those good shots at night? You know, like you started yeah. off with your phone up to the eyepiece and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, like obviously you've got different equipment now, everything like that. So yep. could you talk a little bit about like how to get a good shot with the different equipment that you've used in the past? Yeah, the... Probably the biggest thing that helps is is planning it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's fun just to whatever willy nilly go out yeah. there and try to take a photo, <laughs> but uh, planning it out really helps because if you if you determine what you want to do and how you're going to do it ahead of time, you mm-hmm. don't worry about that when you actually have to do it, mm-hmm. and because that distraction makes you have errors and then makes you frustrated, and now your image is ruined and you feel yeah. like you've lost a night. <laughs> so planning is a big thing, okay. but um, one underrated thing as well is finding the right location. Mm-hmm. Which even even just with the eyepiece, I took the telescope in an old hockey bag that I had. I I shoved it in there, threw it over my shoulder, and just like hiked out into the random desert in <laughs> Phoenix, uh, because you want to get away from light. Yes. Uh, modern age, everything gives off light pollution, and yeah. so that it may not seem like it, it does affect things mm-hmm. a lot. It can be the difference from only being able mm-hmm. to get a 10 second exposure or a four minute long exposure. Yeah. No, definitely. And so, yeah, getting getting away from light pollution, I know that's easier said than done sometimes, yeah. but mm-hmm. uh, even, even just go to a nearby park okay. I- instead of like the street yeah. is, is always gonna be better. Or if there is anywhere around you that's a dark sky area, then that's mm-hmm. also really good. Yeah. Like Flagstaff, Anywhere is good here yeah, because international uh, dark sky city. <laughs> exactly, and so that basically meaning that protective of dark skies, and so mm-hmm. yeah, anywhere is good for the moon Mars uh, uh, opposition yeah. that happened. Mm-hmm. I went out to the parking lot of my apartment complex nice. and just took it in the parking lot. That's awesome. And so yeah, anywhere that is a dark sky is good. Yeah, which light pollution maps online. That's, also, that's what yeah. I use. Shout out to Flagstaff because like 
Gavin lives in the middle of town. Yeah. And he just went into his parking lot. Like yeah. that's how dark it is here. Yeah. So. Like if I'm if I'm walking back from class at nighttime, I can look up and see the Milky Way. Yeah. Like in the mm. middle of the city in, on campus. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely wonderful, especially from originally being in Phoenix. Yeah. The, no, definitely. The difference is astonishing. Insane. Because yeah, there's mm -hmm. all these different scales. Bortle scale is mm -hmm. probably the most commonly used mm -hmm. one. I don't know if you guys have talked about the Bortle scale. We have scale. not. Or wait, I think we did with Raider Lane yeah. um, in season one. But if you want to go ahead and just refresh. like, yeah, refresh everyone's memory. <laughs> yeah. Bortle scale is basically a light pollution scale mm -hmm. uh, from one to nine, nine being your downtown Los Angeles. Maybe you see the moon to <laughs> one being like middle of the Grand Canyon. You can mm -hmm. see everything that you ever wanted. Yeah. And so those numbers from one to nine, basically just how, how good the sky is. Yeah. And so Flagstaff is around like a four. So I think three. around like a two. Oh, really? Okay. I haven't checked in a while. So Maybe like middle of town is like a three, but like oh, edge yeah. of town is like a two. Yeah. Edge of town, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I was looking at the middle. Ah, gotcha. Um, like where your parking lot was. was yeah, probably exactly. Like a three, Which is so. still better than like the outskirts of major cities. Yes. <laughs> and so, yeah. So looking that up again, light pollution maps online. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I've started to look at is SQMs. Sky, sky quality meters, tongue ah. twister there. And that's uh, a little bit uh, more accurate than Bortle scale. Bortle gotcha. scale, obviously nine numbers to explain all of the world's Everything. light is yeah. a, a little much, but that one gives a range uh, to a couple decimals from 16 to 22. Okay. It's like magnitudes per square something. Yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so that value gets a lot more accurate. Mm -hmm. And so 22 being the max, and it's like, yeah, downtown flag is like 20.5, and then even Lowell is like 21. Yeah. So it's like, even though they may have the same Bortle rating, the difference is actually very drastic. Very different, yeah. And so that, that would be the, another step if you want to go a little bit farther into trying to get out of light pollution. Gotcha. Is that, those meters. Cool. So... Location is a big thing. Location, um, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> what about equipment? Like what, um, I know a lot of people are probably going to ask in our Discord, like how much does a good setup cost? Yes. So um, like, for example, how much did your setup cost? Uh, I know. <laughs> this, one, this one's uh, a little a little much. I worked on it for a while. And mm -hmm. so um, camera I bought used online for like, I think 600. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, scope is about seven, mm -hmm. uh, 700 mount, probably about five to 600 as well. Gotcha. And so for the, this setup, it roughly one to two, two grand, okay. or I guess closer to two grand if math works. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it doesn't have to be, be yeah. that, uh, cause Nowadays, I know this is an assumption, but most people probably have some sort of phone on them. Yeah. And most, or iPad, or some sort of digital device that has a camera on it. Mm -hmm. And those, you find a find an old telescope that someone's just getting rid of. Mm -hmm. I, I got a, a telescope because I helped someone move a piano. Nice. And so, <laughs> and, or like my dad's old, old one that he didn't want, he was going to throw it out. Yeah. And so there's always going to be someone trying to get rid of things. So you could mm -hmm. do it without spending a penny. True. Um, yeah. Facebook it, Marketplace is always a good place oh, yeah. to look for this kind of stuff. Offer up has tons yeah. of stuff. Yeah. There's always always good marketplaces out there of people yeah. just trying to get rid of old stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't have to be uh, cream of the crop, yeah. perfect. I'm, I'm going to do NASA research with it. <laughs> totally. Especially yeah. if you're just getting into it. You can get us a very solid setup for mm -hmm. under $500. Okay, cool. A telescope, maybe even a camera possibly, or mm -hmm. at least a an actual mount to put your phone onto it because they do yeah. have those now. Nice. You just clip your phone onto the eyepiece. <laughs> it's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's so much better than like getting a, a nice like calf workout trying right. to like line just up. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've done that so many times. I know. It's it's honestly a good leg like, workout. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're like doing deep squats trying to get yep. the perfect image. <laughs> it, yeah, especially de um, depending on the, the mount. Like some mm -hmm. of the, the telescopes that we have here, the eyepiece can be really weird and you're like almost like, on the ground. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, so what are some good like uh, brands that people could look for? Brands? You know, like yeah. I've uh, heard lot, a lot of good things about like Celestron, Orion yeah. for telescopes. What about for like specifically astrophotography? I mean, yours yours is what, a Red Cat? Is yeah, that what you said? Uh, William Optics is the brand. William Optics. And then okay. Red Cat is the, 
um, telescope. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, William Optics was one I actually had never heard of until. I hadn't either. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was again watching watching YouTube video and it was yeah. recommended and also reading like forums and stuff and people seemed to like it so cool. I went with it. Um, and it allowed me to do photography too. But nice. yeah, uh, Celestron, Orion, mm-hmm. uh, those are definitely going to be uh, top for mm-hmm. telescopes. Also, Explore Scientific. Okay. Um, yeah, I was trying to trying to think. I think there was, <laughs> there was another one. But uh, Explore Scientific is uh-huh. also uh, really good. DSLRs, any any normal brand, Canon, mm-hmm. Nikon, yeah. whatever. Um, but uh, Ioptron is also a, a good a good brand as well that people haven't always heard of. Yeah, uh, that's actually what this this mount is is oh, cool. Ioptron. But um, yeah, for for that kind of gear, also again Celestron, Orion, like mm-hmm. those are the the main name brands. No, totally. But yeah, you d- you can definitely get farther out. Like uh, uh-huh. Mead is oh, yeah. really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Mead. Yeah, Mead. Mead, oh, is, Mead. We have uh, Meads here, but also. <laughs> Uh, huh? m- also Mead is like just a average priced, uh-huh. uh, brand as well that you can talk about. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I think we're running out of time here. All right. so sounds good. <laughs> I told him at the beginning, I was like, Gavin, I know 45 minutes sounds like a long time, but I swear it goes oh, yeah. by so fast. So fast. So. <laughs> only at like 31. Oh, we're only at 31. Mm, we can continue talking if you would like. Yeah. Gavin's got fear in his eyes. He's uh, yeah. like, talking? Really? <laughs> yeah, because now it's going to be improv. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. More than usual. And, this is and true. That's uh, concerning <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> fair, fair. But yeah. Um. Cool. Whatever. You, whatever. I'm. I'm done to talk. <laughs> All right. Let's talk. Let's let's chat, Gavin. All right. So how does this make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Get get real therapy, <laughs> philosophical. So, so how do you feel, how do you star? Feel about this, yeah. When I say star, what does that in- evoke? <laughs> <laughs> can we can we like um, photocopy the the meme that Sarah made of me right there, please? That that was that was my favorite meme. Um, we when we first started doing um, in person video recording. I was zoning out, just like looking off into the distance and Nate got a picture of me and put it in the group chat. And uh, Sarah Gilbert, one of our uh, graphic designers, she she made a meme out of it where it was like me and then like me, but more like in the background and transparent. And it just said like internal screaming. (laughs) Literally, it was hilarious. We have to we have to put that on here now. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to Nate behind the scenes again. Um, I, I like that we're in person now because I can just call you out instead of being like on my laptop at home or whatever. I can just be yeah. like, oh yeah, Nate right there, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's also really, it, this whole time it's been really funny trying to get a reaction out of him, saying things <laughs> and just like glancing over and oh, yeah. seeing if there's any sort of movement from just the standing figure <laughs> in the background. <laughs> No, it's oh, yeah. too much noise. I do have a question, Gavin. Okay. Oh, uh, Nate has a yeah. question. I have a question. What has been your favorite celestial body to photograph? Ooh. Nate wants to know what his favorite celestial body to photograph was. I don't know if you guys can Yeah, that, that's, so. that's good there, you. Go <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as simple as it is, just taking a very wide field of view photo of the Milky Way mm. is 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 great uh, does that count as celestial i guess yeah yeah, yeah. yeah totally it's, I mean, it's very broad our galaxy, but so yeah i'd say yes but yeah i milky way shots for some reason are just mm-hmm. gorgeous to me um mm-hmm. yeah the the first the first real one i did was actually uh, like 30 minutes away from here just like going going east i just pulled mm-hmm. off on the side of the road and just like here nice yeah last summer and i don't know those That's those awesome. always always just stick out to me Totally. Uh, Milky Way. No, it's always beautiful. Yeah. You can't beat it. Nate yeah. said it's always beautiful. You can't beat it. I'm sorry. My nose has been itching <laughs> so bad this entire episode. It's been I've, funny. I'm literally like listening to Gavin just like. This is the worst <laughs> form of ASMR. It's so oh, bad. Yeah. Poor Close Nate. ASMR. Poor Nate has our like a direct line to our mics in his ears. So yep. every tiny sound we make, 
he hears. So you should, Coronate has just been hearing me just like scratching. Like You like, should have like space <laughs> ASMR episode. Oh gosh. That would I think that would, would be your worst nightmare, but it would be It would be hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely maybe, maybe. hilarious. Here's what the Moonraker sounds like. Oh. <laughs> just in the microphone. <laughs> oh. That just like gave me a visceral response. I hope you understand Cold that. Moon like that just uh the the Moonraker is one of our telescopes up at the Givali Open Deck Observatory. And when it's yes. cold, it makes it's crunchy. the worst noises. <laughs> like it sounds like it's gonna fall off its mount. It's awful. And so I would I would really hate, I would really <laughs> hate that. Um, yeah, I would really hate that. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, uh. <laughs> cool. Well, um, you know, I think, I think that's probably a good place to, to stop without us going completely off the rails because oh, Gavin and I are known for just absolutely causing chaos whenever we're around each other. And oh, I think yeah. we've done a really good job of not doing that shockingly. Yeah. Up to this point, <laughs> nothing has been shattered. Yeah. And so like that, I we, take that. We end up yeah. breaking, breaking <laughs> yes. things, things yeah. catch on yeah. fire. So like, I think this is a good place to stop before any of that Why, happens. you don't want to get to that point? I really don't because I really like our mugs <laughs> and I feel like that's the thing that's going to break. Um, that's fair. And I'd rather not. So, um, but yeah, we're going to uh, get some pictures that Gavin has taken and uh, some of his favorite pictures, drop them in our Discord. So if you guys are not already part of our Discord channel, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, you get a lot of behind the scenes content. Uh, you get uh, invites to live stream events, uh, on site events, and all kinds of stuff. And if you guys have any questions, you can uh, go ahead and ask us in there. We have a whole channel for it. We also um, have a Twitter, possibly by the time this posts. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I would go for the Discord, honestly. <laughs> so safe bet. the Discord's the safe <laughs> bet here. Um, but you could also use the hashtag, hashtag ask star stuff. And uh, you can ask us anything about uh, whatever you would like, uh, life, the universe, and everything. Gavin, if they have specific questions for you, do you have a way that they could contact you? Uh, yeah. Uh, one way is just on the Discord, because I am on there. Yeah. I am uh, creeping not under a name that is Gavin, but <laughs> <laughs> but I am I am in there. I think I'm under Eagle. Um, I like, think Because the Eagle yeah. Nebula. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, but I am in there, so mm -hmm. I, I can answer questions there. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I, also, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to, trying to think of where would be the best place to carry your pigeon. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> you want to shout out your podcast? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, I mean, shout out your podcast. I was, yeah, I was trying, trying not to, but yeah. Do um, it. I also do an astronomy podcast called uh, Skywalk Podcast. Nice. Um, we are trying to go through the messy uh, objects, like just oh, cool. uh, dive into like the history of all of them and stuff, mm -hmm. which has been interesting. Yeah. Except for that, like 90% of them are just globs in yep. open clusters. And so that's going to be changing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Skywalk Podcast is uh, where I, I'm doing that stuff. Um, if you want the astro, actual astrophotography, because you could direct message me on Instagram, it's uh, yeah. capturing the unknown. Cool. Is the and then yeah you can uh, direct message me there you know awesome. answer questions and whatnot. Awesome. And where can they find their uh, your podcast? Uh, anywhere. A anywhere. Apple, Spotify, Google. I think also like Wicked. just anywhere uh, that podcasts are, even on YouTube. Cool. So yeah. Awesome. Well, it thank has you. been a pleasure having you, Gavin. Yes, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. This podcast was made possible by our members and donors. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our nonprofit in making more digital education like this available, go to lowell.edu slash donate. Thanks for listening.